Well, I'm Rick Johnson. I'm the coordinator for Thurston County Noxious Weed Control. We're on the Chehalis River, and we're uh, going to be looking at some Brazilian Elodea very shortly. There's been a lot of removal in this section of the river, so we're, we're seeing what the river should look like here. It's pretty clean. Uh, but just up around the, the bend, we'll be seeing uh, where, where we haven't been able to remove the Elodea. And Elodea uh, has been in the Shales River since about 1997, uh, found in, in Thurston County in 1999. Uh, it's an invasive aquatic noxious weed uh, that's very aggressive. It's basically the most robust aquatic invasive plant uh, on the river system. It's the only place in Thurston County where we have this plant, so we're trying very hard to uh, contain it and control it uh, and stop it from spreading to other fresh waters uh, in Thurston County. Really good. Really see that. So you can see the denseness of the plants, and it's just it's just obvious to us that it would be very difficult if this river gets completely choked with this plant for fish to even make it up through it, virtually creating a vegetative dam, preventing salmon from getting upstream to spawn. And this plant is responsible for 60% uh, of the lakes in the state of Oregon have this plant and they're all, they've all been downgraded in their water quality because of the effects of this plant and those effects would be high water temperature and low dissolved oxygen. So this is Brazilian Elodea. It has, it's somewhat unique in that it has very short, broad, kind of wide leaves compared to other aquatic submersed plants. Um, the leaves are a couple centimeters long and, and several millimeters wide. But the plant basically spreads by fragmentation and along these stems roots will start to emerge and start to grow. And then when we get a, you know, a, a flood event or even you know, a good windstorm, the plant will start to break apart and, and freely float down to the next place that it will start growing. Uh, but people need to be aware of this because if you've got this on your prop, uh, when you leave a water body with this in it, then you're definitely going to be spreading it to a new water body the next place that you put, put your boat into the water. So the last couple years, um, groups that, that are concerned about preserving the Chehalis River or returning it back to its natural state, native state, um, has been working together to coordinate and collaborate on, on weed problems. And we have um, members from different county, state, and federal agencies. The project this year um, is being funded by U.S. Fish and Wildlife, uh, and what we're doing is vacuuming this plant material out and going after the roots where the plants are rooted, hoping that that will be the most effective way to uh, return the river back to its natural state. Um, Washington State Department of Natural Resources is involved, as they're involved with aquatic lands, so is Fish and Wildlife, State Fish and Wildlife. Um, Grays Harbor County, Thurston County, and Lewis County Weed Boards are all involved in this project, as well as the tribes. Um, and so we're all just trying to work together so we can have an effective program that returns our river back to the way it should be without this plant invading it. There are other plants that are out here, but none to this extent and causing this amount of uh, damage to the river system. The Brazilian LED has an amazing, uh, intricate, series of root patterns that grow down in throughout the rocks and they're really it's really strong and it's so healthy and strong that it doesn't get washed away by the normal flow of river the standard normal plants in this river don't have very strong root patterns so when the when the river is flowing high it'll flow most of this stuff down or at least not trap anything where this particular weed the roots are so dense and the plant is so dense that when the when the sediment is being washed down the river, it gets trapped by this weed. This is the normal depth of the river at this particular point. There hasn't been anything growing here. This is a normal flow. I'm standing on the river rocks right now. Right here where I've got this stick, we've taken out a bulk plant. You, you saw earlier how big and dense and full it can get. Well, there was a plant here about the size of the boat you're standing in. When we took it out, we didn't take out the, the roots yet. We left it so we could give you an idea of what's happening when the roots gather up the sediment in the river and trap the sediment, it basically brings the bottom of the river up because the, the, the normal sediment doesn't flow down the river like it should, brings the bottom of the river up. So this is, what, this is what's happened to the river right here. Now that's in an area where this water should be the same depth. What happens, this is like five or six years of, of trapping sediment here. So you can imagine if that was doubled or tripled 20 years from now, we could have the water only this deep right here. 
all caused by this plant trapping sediment. Brazilian LODO also would impact uh, our ability to recreate on open bodies of water. If they're completely uh, choked up and with uh, Brazilian LODO, then when you cast your line out, you're going to be bringing in LODO and not getting your lure down to where any fish could be. And they probably won't be there because they would be prevented from being there from the mats of the LODO. I'm Taylor Pittman, and I'm an information and education specialist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Lacey, Washington. I'm here today on the Chehalis River to tell you why the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is interested in funding this project for the Brazilian Eladia removal. We've spent a lot of time and energy and effort, along with our partners, in improving the salmon habitat in the Chehalis River, and with the introduction of this aquatic invasive weed, <clears throat> the Brazilian Eladia, we're quite concerned that it will compromise the integrity of the ecosystem. Fish and Wildlife Service's overall interest is in the fish, wildlife, plants, and the benefits that they can provide for the American public. And here in the Chehalis, there are many people, it would be quite, it would be a huge loss to lose the benefits that the Chehalis River provides to fish, wildlife, and the people who live here. So as a citizen of Washington and as an employee of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, I know we are very interested in what can be done through volunteerism, through uh, further efforts with the agencies involved and all those who are skilled and concerned to remove the Brazilian Eladia. What I saw yesterday, just thinking of how thick the weed was and then we saw the, the sand there now, I mean, it's incredible, or it's even just like what was there yesterday. It's just an amazing plant. I mean, it develops, a, it, it really manufactures its own environment by trapping sediment. It, of course, can't grow in the rocks. It grows in the softer stuff, and then as it grows, it traps more softer stuff and makes it easier for it to grow. And it just expands its own territory. And, and in a case like this, it expands it to the point where it's unnatural, it's not supposed to be in the river, and what it would do is, is pretty much change the, 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 uh, uh, the river to the point where it just wouldn't be natural anymore. It would be a totally different thing. But the idea is with the, with the vacuum device, I can stay right along the bottom. And when I pull the top off the plant, it gets sucked in. But then I'm also able to pull down around the root area and remove the whole root. And I, we think, we believe that's the key to keeping this stuff from coming back annually is taking out the plant and the root, all the biomass and the roots, and then it's a matter of getting it out and then managing it. We manage it by surveying and watching for it annually and taking out the little bit that comes back every year. And uh, next year we'll be able to evaluate how effective that was or wasn't. Um, because this is a, is a, you know, a flowing water system, there's really no other options but manual control. Uh, there may be some mechanical options, but I'm, I'm, it's very difficult to access this river, so I'm not sure those would be uh, able to be uh, implemented as well.